I just installed this Samsung NVMe drive into my computer and it instantly doubled the speeds I was getting before with my previous NVMe drive. This is a really impressive drive with the fastest speeds you're going to get right now, but there are some things that you should know about it before you know if it is right for you. This was sent to me so I could make this video and test it out. And in this video, I want to kind of walk you through my process for upgrading to this NVMe drive and talk about some things that you need to be aware of before you decide whether whether or not this will work for you. For my computer setup, I always like to have two drives installed. One, I have the OS. The other drive, I have all my media and games. That way, if I have a problem with my OS, I can reinstall it, but I still have my games installed and all of my media. Or in this case, where I want to update my media drive, I can keep my OS installed and then just transfer everything onto the new drive. And then I don't have to make any significant changes with my computer. And, and that's what I did. The two easiest ways to do that, you could either dump all of your files from one drive to the other if you have enough space on the other drive or what I ended up doing I just bought an NVMe enclosure and I use a program called free file sync to mirror all of the files from my existing drive onto this one I use Windows and before I could use this I did have to go into the partition manager partition the drive when I did that I gave the drive the same name as my existing drive in my computer I transferred the files over then I installed it in my computer took out the old one and then I went back to the partition manager and I changed the drive letter to what the old one was before. Now this worked for almost everything. I didn't have to make any changes on my computer after the files were transferred over. There was only one application. It was DaVinci Resolve. They recognized that the hard drive had a different ID. So they made me type in my license key one more time. Not a really big deal, just something that you should be aware of. I did all of that about a week ago. Everything has been smooth sailing ever since. It's like I didn't change anything on my computer other than the fact that my transfer speeds are way faster. So so what are the things that you should be aware of before you do the same thing I did? First of all, you should know the difference between PCIe 5.0 and 4.0. 5.0 allows speeds of about 14,000 megabytes per second. 4.0 is half that at about 7,000 megabytes per second. So if you have 4.0, that doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't get the drive. You just won't be able to utilize it to its full capabilities. Now, my computer is 4.0. And like I said, with my previous drive that was in there, I'm still getting twice the speeds. So you can still speed things up. You just won't get the full capabilities as if you have 5.0. Another thing to be aware of is what improvements will you get with the faster drive? As far as boot time and most OS functions, you're probably not going to notice anything faster. The areas where you will notice increased speeds is for some games, you might notice an increased boot time, but especially with something like video editing, if you use 4K or 8K videos, you're going to notice much faster transfer speeds. And also if you do live preview instead of proxy files, you're going to have a much better time if you're using 4K or 8K files. Another improvement you might notice is if you do development, you have a large database or a large spreadsheet, or if you run VMs, anything that runs a lot of data and relies on fast transfer speeds, AI or machine learning, that sort of thing. As far as the drawbacks go, price is the most obvious thing. It costs a lot more to get the faster speeds. The other thing though that you should be aware of is there is more heat involved. So if you do install this on your computer, make sure that you put a heat sink on it. The technology for this is pretty new. And for a lot of people, it's just not going to make sense to upgrade to the faster speeds with this. But if you're someone who wants to be on the cutting edge, or you're planning on getting a computer in the next one or two years, and you kind of want to future proof things, if you do development, if you run virtual machines, if you do video editing, all of these things are areas where you would see a great improvement getting the faster speeds. I do a lot of video editing. So I've really enjoyed having this around. Hope this video helped. Thanks for watching.